And in this video, I'm gonna show you like a full demo of using SEMrush or SEMrush for keyword research. So let's check out the video. We're looking at SEMrush as a keyword research tool. Now, what I'm displaying here is estimate of the traffic and sort of the overview of a domain for a site which I've done a teardown for. So I'll put a link so you can check it out. But a lot of times when I've used SEMrush, I'm using it to estimate the traffic for other sites, right? These sites that I do the teardowns for. So in this case, it gives us some idea of the traffic. I wanted to let you know that you can get 15,000 keywords if you go to nichesiteproject.com. That's my blog. I'm Doug Cunnington. I do a bunch of stuff about Amazon affiliate marketing. So check it out if you want to get some awesome keywords, plus all the templates and tools that I use. And let's get back to SEMrush right now. Now, I'm going to show you how you can use SEMrush as a keyword research tool. It's a little bit different than some of the other tools. And if you haven't seen the other demonstrations and demos of these tools, check, check out the playlist. There are quite a few out there. So first of all, SEMrush is really like a full suite of tools. It's an all-in-one marketing toolkit for digital marketing professionals. That said, it pretty much covers just about anything you need to do, whether you're like a paid traffic person or an SEO, like organic search person, or if you're in the content area. Today, we're really gonna focus more on the content area and the SEO side, but just quickly, I'm going to mention what's inside. So on the SEO side, I'm not gonna read everything out, but it does a lot of things on the SEO side an SEO audit, it can do position tracking and ideas for gaining more organic traffic. That's kind of the area we're gonna play in. I'm gonna skip the paid traffic, I don't care about that. I don't care about social media. Content and PR, that is kind of cool because you can sort of figure out where you want to you know, focus your content. So if you're starting a site, it could be a good way to get an idea about what's going on. Now, one thing I'm gonna try and do for these demos in the different keyword research tools is look at the same keywords and see how they turn out. So this is best fly fishing rods. And I remember when I first got started with niche sites back in like 2013, like fly fishing and fly fishing rods were like a, prop, a very popular sort of uh, example. So that's what I decided to use here. And you can see this is like a full account. And by the way, if you want to check out SEMrush, you can typically get at least a seven-day trial for free. I'll place my affiliate link in the description. I do get a commission if you buy through it, which I appreciate. But if you just want to test it out for a few days, maybe you could get a bunch of data and test it for a few days. And then you know, you'll cancel it when the seven days are up. And then you can move forward with your life. You do have to provide a credit card. But... I think when you see how powerful SEMrush is, you may want to keep it maybe for a month, at least until you do a bunch of keyword research and competition analysis. So number one, we're just looking at, you know, best fly fishing rods. I went to the keyword analytics section here in the overview. You can see that here. And then I put best fly fishing rods here. That's a buyer's keyword, which indicates someone is interested in, you know, making a purchase at some point. So we can see here, it's a keyword overview, the organic search volume for that specific term is 720. I did a little research because a lot of times I've seen the keyword search volume for SEMrush to be a little bit off from what I expected. So I went in the documentation, this help section here, and the volume is the average monthly volume over 12 months. So different tools use different algorithms, and in this case, this is a 12 month average. So if it's something seasonal or something trending, as they mentioned here, it could be lower or higher in certain months, but it gives you a good baseline. And I've said this multiple times, but I'll mention it here again, and I'll say it again and again, is when you, you know, when you use a tool and you get a search volume and then you use a different tool and it's another search volume, that's okay. No one is intentionally trying to trick you or anything. My advice is to just pick a tool and stick with that one because in a relative sense, the keywords and the data that you get and the search volumes from a specific tool, in a relative way, those are fine, right? You could tell that a certain term is searched more than others and vice versa. 
And if you switch around from different tools, your you know relative uh, rankings may be a tad off as far as the search volume. So just pick a tool and stick with it. You should be fine. Now, a couple things about the information we see here. So the organic search tells us the search volume is 720. The number of results is 27 million. The paid search doesn't apply to us, doesn't apply to me, so you could generally ignore it. Same with a CPC. Um, this is for people buying ads, hence the paid search, and we shouldn't really care. As far as the trend, it does give us an idea over you know the 12 months, like when it's most searched for. So that gives us an idea here. And you know this is kind of seasonal, um, favoring sort of the summer, it appears, right? As we scroll down, there's two different areas. So it's a phrase match keywords of which there are 13, so not too many. Um, it holds pretty true to the best fly fishing rod of certain types, but there's only 13 here. Now, when we look at the related keywords, there's 906, obviously a lot more. So what we would do here um, is take a look at the full report of the related keywords, right? That's kind of where we would aim and probably the full report of the phrase match. Now, I'm not 100% sure if the phrase match are included in the related. I would suspect so, but it looks like maybe not. So we'll, we'll quickly check. So I'm going to take a look at the full report over here. And at this point, you have uh, similar data of course, at the top as it's a summary. And then we see the related percentage, uh, the search volumes, and some more information, which I'll talk about in a second. So right here, it's it's ranked by the how close it's related. So I'm gonna flip it around and rank it by the search volume. So we see different information, and I just wanted to double check in the 720 range if best fly fishing rods was in here. So indeed it is not. So that means that we would need to, you know, grab the 13 plus the 907 here, but it does give us a wide range. Of course, 907 keywords is a lot. So a couple things I would do, right? So at this point you have the option to export. So you can immediately click export, pull out uh, the data you want in an Excel file, CSV or CSV, with semicolons. It doesn't really matter whatever tool you want to use. I usually do a CSV just because it's a smaller file and you can sort from there. However, a lot of times what I will do is I'll apply some filters first. Now, I'm just going to show you real quick how to, you know, do a quick filtering method here. Um, so I would just probably put best and then that would filter out everything that doesn't have best so we could just look at buyer's keywords, right? This is the assumption that you're looking for buyer's keywords. Alternatively, if you were looking for informational keywords, you would maybe put in like how to, and then that would pull all the how to keywords. So you see at this point, 112 of them are uh, using the word best. So it's filtered pretty well, and we can see it's filtered by search, or sorry, sorted by search volume. We only have keywords that have best in there. And, you know, you again, this is probably a point where I would export it. Couple things I'll mention real quick. Of course, the keyword is listed, the related percentage is listed, which isn't super relevant. At this point, we just want related keywords, which is good. The search volume is, of course, how many times it's searched in a month. And then we have the KD, and that is the keyword difficulty, and it's an estimate between one and 100. Now, I haven't tested this extensively, but it looks to have a pretty good uh, correlation on how difficult it is to rank for these better than I would say Longtail Pro with a KC number. I find the KC number is uh, quite unreliable and I think it was very good uh, sometime in the past, but I think Longtail Pro, uh, they, I don't know, for whatever reason, the KC number doesn't seem to be super helpful for me. As I mentioned before, the CPC and the competition here, those don't really apply to us uh, as SEO types, not paid traffic types. The number of results doesn't really matter. The trends are interesting, but not super uh, important for us. It does give you some information. As far as the SERPs, you know, it, it'll tell you like what's ranking over there. So if I clicked on this, it would tell me, you know, the top 10. In fact, let me just show you here. I opened that in a separate tab so it wouldn't goof things up. So it actually pulls a cached version uh, from Google results. 
and then we can see you know what's going on on that cert now when we export it we we don't get that information there so the main things i would look at here the search volume and the um, keyword difficulty score the kd just as a reference point now i wouldn't hold the kd as like you know gospel and assume that it's correct but it's a good way to rank keywords especially if you're using something like the keyword golden ratio or something like that okay so from here you can see it's fairly useful to get the search volumes in a meaningful way now the really cool thing is uh, what i'm about to show you so at this point so we have the related keywords here let me go back to the overview so this is the overview section for the keyword that um, we're using for these samples. And then we have like um, organic search results here. So I'm just going to arbitrarily pick one and bigskyfishing.com. I'm actually in big sky country here in Bozeman, Montana. So I'll pick that one arbitrarily and see what's up. So organic search only 788 per month. So not a ton. Uh, four total backlinks, not a ton. I will say the backlink um, information here is not awesome on SEMrush. There are other tools that are better. I think SEMrush shines in the sort of like organic keyword information and what I'm about to show you. So here's where SEMrush is really powerful, right? We picked a site that was ranking for what we were looking for here. And actually, um, quick note, I, I noticed that I, I searched for a specific URL, which is why the search volume is a little bit lower, right? The organic search traffic is a little bit lower than I expected, but it's for this specific page. So the thing that we're able to get here is the keywords that this page is ranking for, of which there are 556. So I can export all of those keywords that this page is ranking for. So that gives me a ton of ideas for keywords that another page is ranking for, right? Another site is ranking for. Further, you can like look at, uh, you know, the competitors, which it doesn't look like there's too many listed just right here. But what I'm gonna do is get rid of the specific URL and, um, get the overall domain information. Okay, this is more like what I expected to see. 34,000 per month for the overall site, and it's highly likely they're getting way more traffic than just this. Now, what you can do, like I said, is export all the keywords they're ranking for, to over 28,600, and then there are main competitors here. So Visit Montana, this is a you know Montana-oriented site, I could tell because the Big Sky information there. So what you can do is look at these other sites in the domain overview for the other sites, and then you can export those keywords too. And you can see we're going down a different rabbit hole where it's really just about Montana and stuff. So not highly relevant to niche sites or affiliate marketing, but all the principles hold true. So quick overview uh, of what we've looked at here so you can go to the keyword analytics for semrush and get keyword search volumes you can do solid keyword research and then take it one step further by looking at the organic keywords for you know bigger sites in your niche outside your niche but maybe they rank for it and as i talk to more and more very successful amazon affiliate marketers I find this is like one of the main ways they get ideas for keywords. Now, they get a ton of data, right? If you downloaded six, 60,000 keywords for this site and then 28,000 for this site, you find you have an issue with too much data, right? So you have too many ideas. Now, the trick is to be able to navigate through all this data in a meaningful way so you can sort through it and what i mentioned before you know if you're looking for affiliate type articles you want to go for like best type articles or maybe reviews or something like that right so i have other videos that tell you how to find buyers keywords but you could aim towards that on the other side you can certainly find informational topics in the same way right 
you could find topics that other people are you know ranking for but they're not even trying to rank for them and in that way you could look for you know, these informational keywords by filtering using how to so again if you're interested in checking out semrush as a keyword research tool you can create like a free account you don't get too much information but if you use my affiliate link i get a small commission but you get like a, at least a seven day trial. Sometimes it's a little longer. I'm unsure uh, what it is at this time, but do check it out. If you have any questions about using SEMrush, leave a comment and I will check it out. Thanks for watching.